Hello everyone, in this video I will be showing you how to check whether a number is strong number or not in C++. So let's get started. So first let me like define you what is a strong number. Okay, the only strong number I found across the net is 145. Okay, so let's consider 145. So what makes 145 a strong number? Okay, so if we find the factorial of individual digits of 145 and we just sum them together, we will be getting 145 itself again. So what are the factorial of each digits? Okay. So 1 is a digit and factorial of 1 is 1, okay. So 1 factorial is 1 and what is 4 factorial? 4 factorial will be equal to 4 into 3 into 2 into 1, okay. So this is 4 factorial and this will be equal to 24, okay. And what is 5 factorial? 5 factorial will be equal to, it's 5 into 4 factorial basically which will be equal to 5 asterisk uh 24 so which is 120 so if you just add all this if we add 124 and 120 we will be getting 145 again so this is a strong number so i just searched the web about examples for a strong number i've only found 145 so if you know any other strong number other than 145 please comment them below okay so this is an example just a factorial of each digit and if it sums up to the number itself again it is called as a strong number so that's it so Really a simple code. This code is very very similar to Amstrad number sum of digits. Okay, so first I will break this program into two parts. Okay, one is like how to extract e each digit, and another one is like how to find the factorial of each digit. Okay, so let's get started. So first thing what we will do is we will get input from the user. So int n be the number. So just put c int n. So here is the part first part that I told you earlier. Here we will be like programming how to break each digit from a number itself so i will just type the code it's just a four line code after typing it i will just explain it fully okay so we will be using a while loop code here while n greater than zero i will be having yeah, the variable r so r equal to n mod 10 and n equal to n slash 10 so that's it so this is a simple code okay here we will be having that factorial thing okay how to find the factorial of each digit okay so really really simple code this is the code how you can like break each digit of a number how to extract basically every digit of a number so let's give an example itself so let's say uh 145 is our number okay let's consider n is 145 so what happens for is that n becomes n is 145 it comes into this loop okay and what happens here is that r r will be n mod 10 okay doing the first iteration so r equal to 145 mod 10 okay which will be equal to 5 because 140 is divisible by 10 modulus operator just gives the remainder so here we'll be writing the code for factorial and here we will be basing making use of this r value so here will be like making use of this r value for finding the factorial of each digit okay so i will code this later now i will just explain you the main code okay so after this what happens is that and n equal to n slash 10 so now our n is 145 okay so what happens here is that this just removes the last letter itself so 145 slash 10 it just basically gives the quotient okay 14 is the quotient okay 14 is the quotient uh it's just a whole number no decimals included so basically really simple n more 10 helps us to extract the last digit from our number and n equal to n slash 10 basically helps us to completely uh, eliminate the last digit so this becomes 14 and this helps us to get the last digit really simple and during the next iteration what happens our n becomes 14 because we have we are just removing the last digit and in turn we are just assigning it to n itself again so our n becomes 14 same thing this time uh, it will be 14 over here and mod 10 will give us the remainder which is 4 and we will be finding the factorial of 4 same thing and here any uh, 14 slash 10 we will get the quotient as 1 so n will be 1 and r will be 1 this time okay so that's it and we will be finding the uh, factorial of 1 and here it will be 1 slash 10 and here is the important thing this will no this won't be equal to 1 1 mod 10 is 1 but 1 slash 10 is 0. So n becomes 0 and here also n becomes 0. 
but our condition fails over here and the while loop terminates because n is greater than 0 but when n becomes 0 this condition fails and that's it our program is done so this is the main core okay F finding factorial is really simple i guess so let me just remove this now okay that's it so now well and good we are good to go so we have first thing we have just extracted the last digit okay just remember how this in mind okay 145 okay that's our target number just as an example so first thing we will be using a for loop to find the factorial okay so it's going to be for int i equal to 1 and you have to start this loop from 1 you have to be really careful over there so let's consider we are finding the factorial of 5 because 5 is our uh, first number and r will be 5 initially so what is 5 factorial it's going to be 5 into 4 into 3 into 2 into 1 this is 5 factorial and let's suppose says that if you are, you are putting int i equal to 0 it becomes 1 into 0 so basically we will be getting 0 as the output where any number that we multiply by 0 is 0 so you have to be careful over here we have to put int i equal to 1 and i less than or equal to r in this case we will be putting 5 okay in this case let's consider this case itself 5 factorial here we have to put 5 the reason is because if we put i less than only 5 means the loop will run from 1 till 4 so this this only the loop will cover if you put i less than 5 so you have to include this number as well so in that case we will be putting i less than or equal to 5 so our this is static okay so in to make it more general we need this r okay so this basically refers to each digit okay so we will be putting r over here same simple so just put then the same thing i plus plus okay so this is the thing that we'll be using to find the factorial two important things initial value should start from 1 and i less than or equal to this r okay so next thing is we need to find this multiplied value so for that we will be using another variable which is fact so you can just go over here and you have to put fact and inside this for loop you will be putting fact equal to fact asterisk i this is quite similar to sum equal to we will put sum plus i right in many cases we will be using same thing but the only difference here is that what is the initial value of fact so in case of sum we will be assigning sum to zero but here we can't do that because if you put fact equal to 0, our entire factorial will be 0 because any number, same thing, any number multiplied by 0 is 0. So what we will be doing is that fact equal to 1. And you need to assign this fact equal to 1 outside this for loop, okay. So for each, like each digit, this fact value should be 1 at initial stage, okay. So this should be outside this for loop and inside this while loop, that's most important thing. You don't assign fact equal to 1 here because for each digit, fact should be initialized to 1. So that's it. We are done with the fact. Next thing, what we will do? One forty-five. We are done with the finding factorial. We need to store this factorial value inside the sum. Okay. So for that, what we will do? We will we will have another variable, sum, and we will just put over here, sum equal to sum plus fact. That's it. And we need to have an initial value for sum, and this initial value should be assigned outside. Okay, because sum is like it's not going to change for the entire uh, loop fact in case it needs to be altered for each digit but sum is just a common thing okay so now we are done with everything so this is fine this will work good and here we are having another problem the problem is that what we will do at the end we will check this initial number n with the summation of 5 factorial we will check this initial uh, 145 with 5 factorial plus 4 factorial plus 1 factorial so this is what we will check but our n will be 0 at the end remember the thing that i told you earlier our n value will be 145 14 and 1 and at the end of this loop our n will be 0 then how can we check our this sum this sum with n so in that case we have to store our input value that is n with the temporary variable okay so temporary variable okay so using by using temporary variable we can like save the value of n okay so here you need to assign temp equal to n that's it so here we will be basically checking the checking the n if that n is equal to this sum so for that here we can use a temporary variable That's temporary variable value will remain the same it will be 145 after this loop also it will remain same only the n value will be getting lost so temp if temp equal to sum sum is this one temp will be the n value okay if it is equal what we will do we will just see out strong number okay and else see out 
not strong number okay save it so let me just run it now i hope it works so i need to input a number let me input 145 itself so as you can see here for 145 i'm getting a perfect output of the strong number so now let me just go over here to make you more, more to make it more clear for you i'll just put c out fact and end it okay really simple i'm just printing the value of this fact after each while loop iteration so for this fact will be printed based upon the number of digits so in case we are having like three digits over here so this fact will be printed three times which is basically like it's obvious because this while loop is going to run three times so this fact is going to get also printed three times so if i just now execute it and run it and for 145 so as you can see here as i told you earlier phi it's this order 5 factorial 4 factorial 1 factorial 5 factorial is 120 24 and 1 so this is a sum okay so it just it just gets added over here so if i can also print that sum sum as well i'll put sum and sum over here so i will also have a yendel over here save it so you can run 45 so as you can see a uh, sum is 120 then 144 then 145 three times citation sum gets updated so this is like really simple code then there is also like another way you can handle this for loop okay so let this be over here sum equal to sum plus fact that is a code okay actually so don't delete that so i'll just comment this one and for loop okay so you can also write this for loop in this way so instead of having like i equal to one you can have as i equal to r and instead of having this i less than you can have i greater than or equal to one and you can have i minus minus so this is like you are coming from the backward direction okay so this will also work so if i just save it and if i just execute execute and run it okay. so just execute and run it okay put 145 same thing i'm getting 120 24 1 substance number absolutely fine so let me just do the same way for other numbers as well so let me put let's say 123 so I'm getting six to one and not an Armstrong number. Okay. Six to one, the reason is because three factorial is six, two factorial is two into one, which is two, and one one. So not an Armstrong number. So let me also do another one thing. So let's say hundred. Or let me put one out nine. Okay, one out nine. One nine. Nine is too large for me to calculate. So let me let me keep it simple. Six, I will put six, one out six, because six factorial is seven twenty. So as you can see here, 720, 0 factorial is 1, and 1 factorial is also 1. So this is not an Armstrong number. So that's it, really simple code over here. And I hope you found this video useful. I also done many other C++ videos, programming videos like this, Armstrong number, sum of digits, so many videos are there, as well as C, C++, Java, Python, 3D animation using Blender. So do check out the software channel, subscribe and support me. It helps me a lot. Thanks for watching.